Okay, with that being said, insolence against the wall. Let's see if he can get it done in game number two. Link engaged. And we're back here in series number two, game number two on Lost Temple. Artosis, why don't you uh, you do the honors and do the introductions? All right, down at three o'clock, we do have Razor Insolence, our Protoss player from Germany, showing a very cool strategy last game, even though he did lose to, the, well, the player up at 12 o'clock. He used to be a Terran player. I would say the most, one of the most successful switches along with uh, Beyond in mm. Korea one of the most successful pro gamers to switch races. He went from Terran, winning a lot of tournaments with that, to Zerg. It is Maus Morrow, given a GG and a GL, a very top caliber Zerg player, showing a lot of skill in that last game. But can he do it again on this map, where it's easier for Protoss to actually defend his natural? Yeah, I'm really surprised. Uh, it looks like Insolence has no, uh, I guess, no desire to put down the fast expansion. Colonel boosting out those probes, dropping his first pylon in his main base. And now going to send that probe over to 12 o'clock. Uh, again, we have kind of a gentleman's agreement that I'm not going to look for your overlord if you just agree to fly right into my main base. So Moro, uh, not a fan of the shenanigans, playing more man style. He makes units, rams them down your throat, and uh, makes you say uncle. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um... I like the way you put that, a gentleman's agreement not to scout the Overlord. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Redcoats during uh, <laughs> the American War, where it's like, okay, that's cool and all, but uh, this is war, guys. Um, and also, the fact that Razor Insolence actually hasn't walled in, he's kind of relying on Morrow to play his safe, solid macro style. What if he had gone for a 10-pool or even quicker, then suddenly right. you have no wall in, and you might be in a lot of trouble, so interesting from insolence here to actually play in this style yeah and and i thought he was going to build a wall kind of a pseudo wall around his mineral line but looks like he's not even doing that he's now putting the cybernetic score at uh, his his i guess half expansion at his ramp uh where he's placed his pylon dropped the cybernetic score there and nothing out of, coming out of the gateway yet meanwhile in the production tab moro making his four zerglings standard as can be probably going to deal with this probe and then take his fast expansion and uh, it's going to be yet again, once uh, this Overlord is dealt with, once uh, we get enough gas, we're, when uh, we're going to see what Insolence drops as his tech choice here. That's right, but Morrow has that Overlord up behind Insolence's base, so uh, that yeah, is one really good nice. thing about playing against someone in this, these positions. Yeah, I mean, you can go and scout them a lot. They can't build anything right near the Overlord, and the Overlord can keep checking to see if that second gas is up. And mm -hmm. that is a very telling sign, because if he doesn't get that second gas, then that tells Moro all Moro needs to know. Oh, you're going to actually just mongoloid me with a bunch of zealots and stalkers. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is something people haven't even fully realized or fully abused yet on Lost Temple, just flying back there. Moro gets full vision, sees there's no second gas. Uh, now we see the second gateway dropped for uh, Insolence. He's pushing out with just a zealot and a stalker to clear the Zelnaga Watchtower. And uh, that, that Zergling in full retreat from Moro. Meanwhile, Moro has taken his expansion. Looks like, does he have Zergling speed on the way? Yes, about 40% uh, complete there. And uh, I like this little bit of pressure with the Stalker and Zealot. The Zealot able to tank a lot of hits from uh, Zerglings, and the Stalker able to do infinite micro until the Zergling speed is complete. So really nice pressure here for from uh, Insolence. But he's got to be careful. Once that Zergling speed is complete, he needs to not be anywhere near Zerg. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's actually overcommitting a little bit here, I think. The Zerglings are coming out now and look like they will surround that Zealot, so Moro doing a good job taking the Zealot out. And when that Zergling speed does complete, goodbye to the Stalker. Um, you know, you have to be careful if you're going to push like that. It's absolutely great to do, but if you lose those extra units and you are going for a rush, as we see he is doing, he is in fact going to do the Mongo Rush. This is pretty exciting. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of Zealots, a lot of Stalkers. And it is going to pack a lot of punch, Chill. Yeah, let's see what Moro does in response as the pylon train has started. Two zealots, two stalkers warped uh, to this forward pylon. And he's Moro has decided to deal with it with the Zergling spine crawler, which is something I've had success with. But let's see how uh, effectively Insolence can uh, pull off this four gate attack. 
Well, Insolence is going to want to see that there's a lot of Zerglings out there. He has to make some more Zealots, or he might get a mm -hmm. huge flank on. There are some Zerglings outside. I love that by Morrow. Oh. And Morrow looking like he is going to go for it, surrounding those Stalkers, getting the surface area on the Stalkers. That is absolutely huge. And it looks like he is going to clean this up very easily. Definitely a huge mistake by Insolence to walk all the way over there without enough Zealots. And Morrow just cleaned this up. And here is the thing, this rush, it is very strong, but it's hard to transition out of if Zerg owns it up, like Morrow just did there. Yeah, if you're Insolence, what do you do to follow this up? You just lost your pylon. Yeah, you have a pseudo wall in at your ramp, but you know he's trying to put down his second assimilator, probably gonna try to tech into something else, but he's so far behind. Let's see what Morrow is making. Uh, just making three overlords as he supply block himself, but throwing up the income tab, he's ahead by one in the harvesters and way ahead in the income. Gonna push forward a little bit with these spine crawlers, but he Moro actually still has that overlord in uh, in Insolence's base, so he can sacrifice that when he feels comfortable. He saw the second assimilator timing go down. Looks like Moro's gonna respond by killing the destructible rocks and possibly taking the gold base if necessary, but at least putting the option out there. Uh, while well, he's not doing anything. And Insolence is going to try to expand. That's extremely surprising to me. Yeah, I cannot actually believe he's expanding after this. And in fact, Moro sees that with the Overlord on the ledge. It's going to allow Moro to do anything he wants. Uh, right. Yeah, anything he wants. He can actually go and expand. He can tech. He can make a bunch of units and attack. Because Insolence, obviously, very, very far behind after doing that quite all-in rush and trying to make it not all-in by expanding afterwards. And here he comes, a lot of Zerglings running up here. Can he force a cancel or anything like that? Look at that beautiful surround, forcing a bunch of force fields out there. And Moro may want to just target this Nexus, which he is doing now. If you can force Protoss to cancel the Nexus even one time, Zerg gets quite far ahead. But it looks like the more Zealots warping in will stop that. And production tab for Moro showing uh, seven drones on the way now completed. Another macro, uh, another hatchery on the way. No, excuse me, that's a lair. Uh, so not going to take his third base. He's got his roach one on uh, uh, on the way. Sorry to expand on your point here, Artosis. The problem with uh, Insolence making this natural is he has to build enough units in case Moro tries to break this natural. Meanwhile, he has no scouting. He has no map presence. So. Moro can try to break it, and then, you know, Insolence needs to be defensive with his, all, all his units. But if he doesn't try to break it and just takes the gold and makes only drones exactly like he is doing, then there's really no recourse for Insolence. He's not going to know... He, he has no idea where he is in this game. He doesn't know if he needs to tech. He doesn't know if he needs to be attacking, be aggressive, be defensive. It's just not a comfortable position for a Protoss player to be in. Yeah, he's playing quite blind, so it looks like, you know, as he throws up that robotics facility and that forge, I think what Insolence is going to do is just transition into a very solid group of units and maybe hit a two-base timing attack, see if that won't do some some damage against Moro. But, you know, this is the type of situation that you might want to get Hallucinate for. Obviously, you're going to have a lot of sentries, and as mm -hmm. you said, Chill, you have no map presence, you have no idea what's going on, so it's a pretty good idea to get something like that. Try to scout, see what's happening, because you certainly don't want to be caught just sitting there making a bunch of zealots when your opponent's making drones and a gold base. Supply is kind of echoing the situation. Moro at 93 supply, Insolence down at 64, and meanwhile Harvester count 54 to uh, 44, of course, favoring the Zerg player Moro with the gold base about to uh, hatch right about now. Drones are going to Maynard over there. We've got 10 drones on the way. We've got an extra queen dropping uh, creep tumors. You know, just playing safe. Moro uh, doesn't want to lose to anything funny here. Just getting his upgrades going. He's got his, his roach worm with glial reconstitution. Uh, getting the roach speed. He's got plus one uh, ranged attack coming out of the evolution chamber. Just, you know, really, really does not want to die to anything silly. He's got enough roaches so that if Protoss were to move out with this army, he would be able to crush, crush it. But he's not making enough units that he's going to try to go all in. And actually, look at this. Taking another expansion at 9 o'clock's natural. Uh, meanwhile, we finally have an observer out for insolence, so he's going to be able to find out what he's up against finally. You know, I, I do really love exactly what Moro is doing here. You know, a lot of players are just like, oh, I'm so far ahead, I'll just make drones and expansions. But Moro, as you said, adding in units as well to make sure he doesn't die to anything silly. He's He just understands what to do in these situations, which is awesome. Now, this Observer is finding out exactly what's going on. There's a ton of roaches popping out. The Observer obviously going to be able to see that. But double robo all the way, chill. It is going to be <laughs> immortal time 
for insolence. Yeah, the problem here is that uh, insolence is always one step behind. Oh, look at that! Overseer flying in to just drop some goop on that uh, immortal trying to get out of the robotics. But as I was saying, insolence is now transitioning into immortals right when Moro is transitioning into hydras. Uh, meanwhile, he was just getting his expansion up when Moro was taking the gold base. He's been one step behind all games since that four gate, and I really don't see him uh, exploiting a mistake of Moro to get back into the game. Well, the thing is, Moro just isn't making mistakes. He's playing a beautiful, right. wonderful game. Uh, you know, I, I loved his uh, defense of those four warp gates. You know, he stopped at 20 drones as you're supposed to to defend it. Now he went, he made some extra units. He tried to force a cancel on the Nexus, took the gold base, droned up at the right times, made units at the right times, getting his upgrades correctly, switching his tech into hydras, as you just said correctly. And uh, that is just going to make it so hard on Insolence. But in his uh, favor, you know, he does have the double row, was making a lot of uh, these immortals to deal with the roaches. But at the same time, he has a lot of sentries, which is what he was missing last game against this unit combination from Morrow. Now uh, transitioning over into Colossi, he's got one Colossus out, second one out. Uh, he's trying to push ahead, but look how far this creep spread has actually gotten. Now the Observer joining the army, so it's able to clear out some of these creep tumors. Uh, Insolence trying to uh, take the gold, but he's got to be careful. He doesn't want to get too aggressive here. He just wants to have a little bit of presence on the map of Moro getting a reasonable flank here as he moves in. Force field's going up, completely isolating the attack from the top, which is really nice as Moro's forced to withdraw from that and looks like he loses quite a bit from the southern flank. Meanwhile, Guardian Shield going up for Insolent, so he's getting value out and getting cost effective. That's really what he needs to do. Maybe he wants to warp in a few more sentries. He does not want to be aggressive. He wants to fall back, get his uh, get his gold base up, you know, get that rolling, and then he can start to get some presence on the map. At this point, he just wants to be moving forward, cutting armies apart, getting free kills when he can. But he cannot commit to attacking a 190 supply Zerg army. Yeah, you know, he has to step back. He is actually committing a little bit too much, I think. You know, Morrow's doing these awesome, mm -hmm. awesome flanks using his creep highway. And uh, as you said, Chill, this is all about insolence just sitting here and poking ever so slightly, just killing off little units like we see him doing right now. But now move back. You do not want to overcommit here. Really, insolence needs to max out before doing a real battle against right. Morrow. He has a lot of sentries, so look at that beautiful. Cuts that army off once again. But a lot of corruptors out, taking out one of his uh, Colossus, the other one looks like it's going to go soon. The rest of Morrow's army meandering around, but uh, now <laughs> suddenly Insolent's kind of trapped in the middle of the map here. Yeah, really, uh, I guess, ironic twist of fate there. Moro now trying to flank from the 3 o'clock. Insolence needs to get out of the middle of the map. That's not a spot he wants to be in. Drops a few force fields, one on the high ground. That's not a lot of benefit there. And nice force fields. Going to uh, kind of isolate the army as he's in full retreat. Supply count showing 184 for Moro, 131 for Insolence. He's got to get his gold base rolling. He's probably got some time to deal with that right now. Uh, someone asking if Insolence didn't have Colossus range. No, he just doesn't have the gas to get it going. He doesn't have it and he hasn't started it. Just trying to make enough units that he can stay alive here. You know, uh, definitely he should get that gold base going. Finally main arting the probes down. And mm -hmm. he is making some more Colossus, as you said. He's got to wait for those. I get so scared every time he takes a step towards Moro's army uh, right. with his little tiny Protoss death ball. It's not much of a death <laughs> ball right now. It's kind of a hurt you ball. But the Colossus <laughs> are popping out. So uh, he may, in fact, get that group of units out to be able to deal with this. But he's going to have to use his force units beautifully. There we go. A lot of good force units going up. Moving a little bit too close, I think. Those Hydras getting some good surface area in and using more and more force fields to actually break through, but will he lose the gold nexus? That is going to be the important part of this game. Yeah, I guess Insolent's getting a lot of value out of his army, but getting completely flanked now as he moves forward to save that gold base. Gold base under siege by four roaches, and Insolent looks like he may not... No, he may die here. I was going to say he may not die here, but uh, it's not looking good for him. Some zealots running in to take some damage from... Uh, from the Hydras. He manages to save the gold base, but the supply count tells the tale. 80 for Insolence and Moro at 134. A lot of production on the way for Moro, a lot of upgrades on the way, and uh, Insolence gets to live another day. But looking at the map, the only color more dominant than blue is the purple of the creep spread, and that's not a good situation for Protoss. Well, it certainly isn't. Uh, the supply right now, about 130 to about 80. 
and Morrow obviously in a huge lead there and just starting to pop out huge amounts of units. Uh, the drone count is at 75 to 50 probes, so his economy obviously huge compared to Insolence's. Uh, Insolence just being a little bit too aggressive this game, and Morrow, he is back, man. He has a lot of upgrades on his Zerg units, and there just aren't a lot of Protoss units out on the map right now. Looking at uh, at Moro's, you know, how he's handling his macro, his money is often under 500 minerals, and his queens are often at 100 uh, energy. You see players at this point in the game having 200 energy on all his queens, but Moro's still uh, hitting a lot of his injections, and that's why he's so good. We can see now Colossus Roach, or excuse me, Corruptor Roach, moving in, trying to chase down those Colossus, chase them away, back into the main base of Insolence. Insolence now trying to defend his gold base, but uh, that's a tall order. Roach is running right in, going to snipe away that Nexus. Gold Nexus is down. Corruptor is doing a lot of damage to the Colossus. First one going to go down, second one getting targeted, and I think this may be it. Moro just having too many units for Insolence to deal with. Yeah, that, that is quite true. With that gold base going down, Insolence basically has nothing left, trying to kill off these roaches. And even though he may be able to do that, well, never mind. I guess probably not be able to do that. GG, that is it. And Moro, 2-0 to zero over Insolence. Very strong Zerg play. You know, Insolence looked, uh, he looked good, especially in the first game. But compared to Moro, Moro just looked... A, a level above him. Moro looked like a player who hits his timings, he knows what to do uh, in certain situations, and mechanically he just looks solid. I'm always impressed by a player who doesn't miss their injections, has a sick creep spread, and uh, hits their timings for uh, for making their proper units so that they don't die to any sort of rushes. And, and Moro uh, just, you know, put giant check marks next to all three. It looked very dominant in that series. Well, yeah, I mean, that is what you have to do as Zerg. It really takes a lot of multitasking, a lot of intelligence, and Morro has shown that he definitely has both of those. This is the second finals for him in as many weeks of a very <laughs> strong tournament. Uh, I'm just so impressed with this guy, one of the few Zergs right now who are really performing.